Welcome back to Tales from the Power Age. How are you doing, guys? You good? All good, mate. Thank you. Brilliant. They're all happy because ACDC have announced a tour, and so am I. But more about that another time. Right, tonight we're going to take you all the way back to 1989 as we bring to a climax our tour from the 80s. And uh, we've got some great albums for you on 1989. Before we go to that, though, uh, 89 was a really important year because it was the fall of the Berlin Wall. And... Black Box was top of the charts with Ride On Time. But anyway, none of that tonight. We're going to talk about heavy metal and rock albums from 89. But before we do, I'd like to remind you that if you're watching this, either for the first time or for the second time, sounds like it sounds like a foreigner song. Please give us a subscribe, hit the hell's bell, get involved, give us a like, get some comments going. Uh, you're going to love it. Anyway, let's get on to our first three. Jam, over to you. But it does feel like the very first time, Dill, as you said there, the foreign reference. Uh, yeah, um, luckily I've got three of the greatest records of the 80s, let alone just 89 today, <laughs> kicking off with the most awesome uh, cult record, Sonic Temple. Um, for me, this one, when this one came out, we, we, we've talked previously about Electric, and that was sort of a basic rock album, very ACDC styled. They went away, the cult, and they came back with this, and it's an absolute masterstroke. They've They've all got brilliant at their instruments, in my opinion. The, it's it's sonically superb. I think mean, it's called Sonic Temple. At this time in our lives, we are in the sort of realms of being 19. Um, and we're driving. Um, so we've got, well, I know I did. I had a cassette player in my car. So it was all about the cassette. And this is one of the many albums at this period that in the in-between, for between records, vinyl records and CDs. I bought the tape because I wanted to play it as soon as I bought it and I wanted to play it in my car. I spent more time in my car than I did in my at home, in my in my family home with my parents and that. It usually sat with mates uh, listening to music. And this is one of those that I bought, had it on tape, listened to it in the car. I spent a lot of time with our mate Shane listening to this record. Um, it's got some brilliant ones on it. Sun King, The Beauty of Sun King and Fire Woman. Um, and I was listening to this again the other night and it's just brilliant. There's a song in it called New York City, which is a bit punky, but you can feel everyone in the band just letting themselves go and loving every second of it. If you've listened to this record and you know it well and you haven't listened to it recently, stick New York City on and you'll see what I'm about, especially when you get halfway through. They're just breaking. There's, there's riffing and there's solos breaking out left, right and centre. And again, they'd come on so much since Electric. Um, I know that at least one of the guys here really rates this out record, but what do the rest of you think? Yeah, I really like it. I remember seeing them on top of the pops doing Firewoman before the album came out. And I thought, okay, this is a, they are no longer an English band. They have fully transformed to be an all American band now. And, uh, it sound, yeah, it sounded great. You know, they have Bob Rock doing the production and, uh, we all know he's done some amazing productions for, uh, Metallica and Motley Crue and plenty of others. So, uh, yeah, they were fully formed by this stage as a American arena band. And yeah, it was great. Yeah, I didn't like it as much as the previous album. Production's better. Yeah, I know yeah. what I'm saying about the musicianship is better as well, but mm. for me, it wasn't as good as the rawness of uh, Electric. Yeah, I agree with that. Gaps. I think Electric's a better album in my mind. But this was this was them going into uh, the American market. And when you look, when we mentioned yeah, some of the sales, big. yeah, when we mentioned some of the sales of the other bands, you can see why they were chasing the. I was going to say the pound, but chasing the dollar. Dollar, yeah. Everyone chasing the dollar then. Okay, next one, Jim. Cool. Yeah, um, this one, uh, this is this is one of those personal ones. People that are watching this. I mean, I know I don't think there's going to be a lot to come from you guys on this one. This is Gun, one of the bands that I really, really rated and I really enjoyed. This is their debut album, Take on the World. People will look at Gun here and they go, "Oh, hold on, I know one of their songs." You know, Word Up that they did. It was a cover of well, it was a Cameo did it. Mm. Um, terrible i had to go and see cameo a year or so after this i think early 90s and i saw them live at oxford and they were dreadful i think it was um, before jam i think you went to see them in the 80s oh, um, could have been you still at school i think that made sense they yeah, still dreadful. whenever the hell it was they were dreadful um, they went, yeah i had to go as part of an agreement with a mate and yeah <laughs> anyway um, this only played for an hour 
It's, it's 40 the minutes. same song about 40 10 minutes. Times. It was only 40. Yeah, it's like the same song over and over. I was like, I don't understand. I know why I'm in metal now. Anyway, um, <laughs> they did the cover of Word Up on the Net in a couple of records' time. This is their debut. Um, and I really, really liked it. I got it when it came out. I must have heard I must have heard them on the Friday Rock Show. Otherwise, how would I have known about this Scottish band? What's going on? So I must have. And I got this record. Um, it's called Taking on the World. And the title track on this on this record is a song that I've, I've visited a lot over this period. We've spoken before. This is when we're 19. There's a lot of, drug, a lot of drink was flowing. Um, we liked to drink. I did. And there were some tough times around that time. At a time when it wasn't OK not to be OK. Blokes didn't cry and blokes didn't open up about stuff when you had stuff going on you'd bottle it up and if you were like me you'd listen to certain songs to help you through stuff and this is one of those albums this is that song for me that really helped me through a lot of sh a lot of shit um strangely enough it's come back on my tone table over the last year or so when there's been stuff going on in my life and it's it really lifts me i've seen them play this song and songs off this record live umpteen times over the last let's say 20, 30, 40 years, however many years it is. And it gets me every time. It's got a real feeling, but not just on a dance, it really gives a lift. It's all about taking on the world. And when things aren't feeling good, you can do it, you can get through it. So for me, when I'm picking a record, I can't have this album. And there are a lot of other songs. It's not just that that song, there's a lot of other songs. Um, one called Money, Shame On You, all of them had 12 inches. I've got the deluxe version of this album and it's superb. Um, and as I said, very personal record to me. I don't even know if any of you three would have ever even heard this song. I know Gap, Gap has been a sea gum with me a couple of times, but any thought, any other thoughts to add on this record? Is this the one where they had uh, better days and stuff like that? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, I was, I was yeah. getting too caught up in my emotions there, but the, the, they did the have some hit singles then. Yeah, yeah, it must yeah. have. But taking on the world was so strong. Then you had better days, all about the better days. Yeah, it really resonated. Mm. Yeah, I remember seeing them on top of the pops and taping them. You know, they were yeah. they were they were good enough. I just for yeah. some reason never actually got the album. I'm pretty sure I saw, and maybe someone can tell us in the comments. I'm pretty sure I saw. I was thinking about this today. Them supporting the Almighty around that sort of time, or maybe the other way around. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I saw him in Birmingham around that time. Yeah, with maybe. The Almighty, which that's, actually, that's ringing a that is actually ringing a bell with me. Ring about, but uh, yeah, I don't know, but. Um, yeah, but things were starting to change, and maybe maybe they were sort of, you know, in some ways, a bit ahead of their game, weren't they? Because they were a little bit brick popish as well. So yeah. there was all yeah. that stuff like Wonder stuff and etc. coming out at the time. So yeah. they knew how to write, write a, a hook. These guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. cool. Next one, Jam. My third offering. I'm pleased to say is probably the best Kiss album that's been released ever, to be honest. And. What's going on with you lot? I don't know what. Anyway, Hot in the Shade uh, by Kiss. Uh, 15 songs clocking in at 58 minutes. They didn't leave anything off of this. I honestly don't know why anyone would ever react the way you three have just reacted. It kicks off with Rise to It. It features Hide Your Heart, Prisoner of Love, Silver Spoon, The Street Giveth, and Slap in the Face. Slap in the Face is one of my favourite songs for listening to in the shower. It's got so much attitude. I love it. It's on my shower mix. Um, and I think Forever's on this record, and that's, is it? It's Forever yeah. on this record, Gavin. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, That's the only one I don't know. It's a ballad. I think by now we're nine years into, we're, this is you the 10th year. You love ballads. I'm flipping eight ballads when they're not supposed to be there, and that's rubbish. Uh, you lot are probably going to say, actually, the only song I liked Forever, and yeah, I disagree. I do quite it's like up it. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there with tears are falling for me. Um, like that as well. Fun. 15 songs. <laughs> my, my problem with it is, they need to so, edit a few of the duffers out. You don't I, need 15 songs on the album. That's why I had to comment on it being 58 minutes. So, guys, yeah. I list just six six songs there that are brilliant. Um, it's awesome. It's utterly amazing. What are your thoughts? Probably the only time I've ever heard any of it, it was in your bedroom. So that would have been Did it sound immense? 30 odd years ago. And I, I, I can't, well, it might have done back then, but I, I can't yeah. remember any of it now. Yeah. Okay. Well, a whole year after we saw them in Germany at Donington and the Marquee, but there's a couple of shots from the Marquee the year earlier. If you're interested. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, that's my three albums, and I thank you. I'm expecting to see all those three in the top five at the end. Good stuff. Well, uh, fingers crossed for you, Jam. Uh, next, uh, next is Gapio. So it's a it's a real mix with these three. So 
Well, as uh, yeah, if you've been watching any of these before, you know I was heavily into my thrash metal, and this is uh, Canada's finest exponent of uh, said art form. Uh, the mighty Jeff Waters, probably the most underrated um, guitar player of the whole metal genre. Uh, there's only three people playing this album. He plays guitar, all the guitars, the bass, and you've got a drummer and uh, the awesome and the awesomely named Randy Rampage on vocals, who's sadly no longer with us. Uh, brilliant album Star, starts off with a uh, a little instrumental um on uh, acoustic guitars like most thrash metal albums of the time did but this one went on for a little bit longer than most of them uh called crystal Anne, and then straight into alice in hell not alice in hell alice in hell named after alison uh who's uh pictured there on the stairs uh which is an iconic thrash metal anthem played all the time today and got heavy heavy rotation on uh, mtv at the time there's a few great tracks on this album. Uh, Alison Hell, Burns Like a Buzzsaw Blade. It, it's thrash metal, but there's lots of speed metal involved in this as well. It's uh, it's a very, very fast album. Um, and it, uh, it was a precursor to their, their greatest effort, which for me is uh, Never Never Land the, the album after this. Um, but yeah, great album. Anyone else? I loved it. If you hadn't ever, I, I wanted this as in my three, um, but obviously I couldn't, couldn't quite squeeze in because my three are freaking awesome. But this would have been in there if you hadn't had it because this couldn't be left out. Chris Lann is brilliant. Um, one of our one of our friends, um, Billy Watman, does a great version of that. So if you wanted to YouTube that, have a catch Billy. He's an awesome guitarist. Um, and it's a really, really strong album. Um, I had it back in the day and I think then I lost it and I replaced it. I managed to replace this a couple of years ago. Yeah, I only I had, had it on it. tape, this one. Never had it on vinyl. No, so it's, 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 it's an absolute banging one. I didn't even know I liked speed metal, but if that's on here, then I like it a lot. Yeah, it's one of my, one of my favourite proper metal records in the gappy genre, as I tend to call it now. So massive. <laughs> cool. cool. Right, next one then, Gaps. Yeah, well, <laughs> no surprise. We're staying in the same genre. Uh, a testament, the album that really uh, sort of broke them as, a, as uh, well, they were a little bit behind the big four, but uh, if they would have been a big five, I think they would have uh, squeezed into it. Uh, it's a record that got them probably into the uh, Clash of the Titans tour. Uh, there's some good stuff on here. The, the, the title track's brilliant. That's what it opens up with. Um, it's uh, very raw sounding, like most of their records. Uh, the riffing on here is, is fantastic. They came out with uh, uh, the first thrash ballad, I believe, uh, a song simply titled The Ballad, which, uh, which is a really, really lovely little slow song on here. Not really a ballad, but... Uh, it probably gave uh, Metallica the idea to do their ballad on the album that they brought out the, the year after. Well, I like to think it did anyway. <laughs> um, uh, there's some, also some real thrash metal on here. Blessed in Contempt is a superb thrash metal anthem. Uh, there's a bit of uh, social commentary with Greenhouse Effect, another one which got a lot of uh, rotation on MTV. And yeah, it, it propelled them forward in the, in the genre. I think it's a really, really strong, really strong album. Cool. Was, was Fade to Black not a ballad? Mm, not really. No, I liked it, so it can't have been. Um, <laughs> bless, bless, well, it's a brilliant track. Blessed in Contempt. Let's just take a minute. That's a freaking great name for it. What a great title. Bless it's a great Contempt. track too. Love it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Gav, we saw him in Germany uh, the year before. Uh, yeah, 88. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember uh, any comments on this album at all? To me, they've always been solid, but they've never really massively compelled me to rush out and buy their albums. So I'm probably in the, the minority, but um, they're really good. They're, you can't criticise them, but they just didn't have that extra X factor for me. I was the same. Fair, I mean, we caught them live a couple of times, didn't we? As you said, at Clash of the Times. Yeah, I've seen and, them quite a few times. Yeah. yeah, I saw them a few times and I liked them. I remember liking them and thinking they're yeah. good, but I, I didn't go out and buy the records, which is terrible, because you know how many mm. bloody records I bought. Yeah. yeah, as you say, I didn't get to that point where, oh, I must buy that. So, yeah. Watching some of these, though, make, makes me want to go and listen to them. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, that's so we'll go from Testament to the other end of the. Uh... Yeah, we're going to switch genres for me. And uh, this is about as glam metal as I ever got, uh, White Lion. Um, they were glam, I suppose. They were certainly billed as that, but they were glam, but they could play, in my opinion. Uh, unlike some of the other bands I thought, because Vito Bratta on guitar, absolutely amazing guitarist in the sort of Eddie Van Halen vein. A lot of criticism for him for sounding a little bit too much like Eddie, but 
his soloing certainly wasn't anything like Eddie's and he's uh, written on here some of the greatest solos uh, of all time in my opinion uh, the song Little Fighter uh, about the Rainbow Warrior Greenpeace ship solo and that is is absolutely fantastic um, uh, Living on the Edge another one uh, and Let's Get Crazy a real real fast rocker there's some uh, slower ones on here because White Lion always did a ballad and I think you like some of the ballads on this one Jam don't you? Yeah, you would. No. You don't? Even no, on like, this record? Yeah, I liked When the Children Cry. I said this on a previous yeah, that's, pod. Yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. That's the exception. Um, yeah, and and also, there's an exception with a, with the cover version, because uh, it's a brilliant cover version of Radar Love by Golden Earring on this on this record, which is uh, yeah. which is really good. Uh, yeah, so it's a total different uh, end of the spectrum for me, and uh, I still play this uh, quite regularly. Absolutely love Mike Tramp's husky vocals on this as well. Uh, didn't really get enough credit. Uh, as a vocalist, I thought back in the day, and they should really have been a lot bigger than they actually got to. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah, look, I agree with that. I think um, really underrated. I think they got more kudos now, funnily enough, um, than they got back in in the day. So you quite often see comments about what a great guitarist uh, Vito Bratta is. I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely, he is absolutely amazing. amazing. The lyrics as well. You never, I think. And I've said this before, I think many people bypassed White Line because Mike Trump was almost too good looking. It almost put people off. But the lyrics are absolutely brilliant. And your point, Little Fighter, which is, of course, about the Greenpeace boat, it's just a great song. And I, I picked the mm -hmm. same, Living on the Edge, brilliant, Let's Go Crazy. And, of course, uh, Radar Love and Cry for Freedom, brilliant, brilliant tunes on this album. I think if you're looking to um, learn about White Line, get this one. This is brilliant. So yeah, it's their, it's their best record, I think. Yeah, for sure. Which, interestingly enough, I mean, as you say, the, the exception to the rule that is that Radar Love is, is actually a great cover. I've, I can't think of any other covers that are worth putting on a record than that. Do you know what I mean? There's been many, many, many. Um, and that's a really great cover. I preferred Pride. Pride? Pride, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, Pride was a previous album, yeah. I just loved it. And that was, and I bought all of these when they came out because I really liked I really liked. But it was you, that got, you and Naz that got me into them. Where when yeah. you, you and him had Pride um, and you got me into them and uh, I got yeah. this one when it came and out. This is yeah. good. But again, for me, Pride just edged it over this. So, again, a really strong, really good record, in my opinion. Uh, crap cover. Talking of great covers, terrible. Yeah, that's what I just said. That's it, crap. But there it's you go. not that bad. There's certainly been some worse ones than that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. That doesn't say much, does it? <laughs> but it's phony. <laughs> <laughs> I only cool. got one album I got the best of, and that, that did me. Oh. That did, that loads of tracks off it, and you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. They, if, also, if you want to check out our live reactions, they're on the a Motley Crew pod that we did. Yeah, that's fine. yeah. So check and that out. And also, one of the main reasons we went to see Motley Crew, certainly for me and Jam, anyway, was because they were yeah. in Skid Row was supporting. Yeah. Also, if you go to our live channel, there's uh, I think Little Fighter. He's on there from uh, Camden Assembly Rooms last year. And if you get the chance to go and see Mike Tramp plays White Lion, I'd really encourage you to do it. It's brilliant. It's a great show. Two hours. He does lots of narrative in between. And he's really funny as well. Brilliant. Definitely worth going. Cool. Yeah. Right. I think it's yeah. me next. So here's your top three, I reckon. Um, well, in my mind, anyway. I'd have only picked two other records, I think, out of these 12, apart from this three. One of those would have been White Lion. And one of those is one that Gav's got a little bit later. But the first one is Motley Crue, uh, Dr. Feelgood. Um, this is a great, this is a good album, good sort of uh, uh, solid. Um, then back on form, they've had some issues around turning up for gigs. They'd had some issues about um, various things that were going on uh, as a band and in their career. Um, it was released on September the 1st, 1989. And... Um, it comes in at just over 45 minutes, which um, is probably longer than I remember, actually, thinking about it. But some great standout tracks, Dr. Feelgood, Kickstart My Heart, which I still play today. Uh, same old situation with Dirty Habits doing the uh, doing the B-Vox, still play today. And there's a, there's a brilliant, lovely deep cut, Sticky Sweet, which is a great song. And if that's not one you've heard for a while, I'd really encourage you to go and put that on. Um, it got to number four in the UK, number one in the States, and shifted over six million units in the States alone. So um, a success. And when we're talking about getting into a certain genre and trying to uh, flog some units, then they were certainly onto the uh, onto the right course. But yeah, I like this album. I think it's really good, and I still listen to it today. 
Um, so any other thoughts, guys? This is their Sorry. favorite record that they did. Um, when, you th when I look at this and look at the dates, I saw them um, open up at uh, Donington in 84, and I thought they were a joke. They were just rubbish. And I just thought, I, that's just my bit. I just thought, yeah, nothing. I'm never going to like them. Five years later, they came to a place where they released this, and I thought, actually, it's a really good album. And it, had, it seemed to have more good songs on. Their first few albums seemed to have a good track on each one or one or two. This one had the majority of the, of the album. I bought, I had it on tape in my car, and I played it a lot. It's really good. I thought it's really strong. And produced by Bob Rock as well. Who yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. 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 Had a busy year. Yeah, he did. Obviously, he probably made a few quid, I'm guessing. Yeah, he did well. <laughs> the following year, he did even better. Yes, yeah. We'll, we'll come to that at a later time. Anything else from anyone else on this one? No, no. no everyone's drinking. Right, next one is uh, a, another classic album uh, from the time, Aerosmith Pump. And um, this was on Hot on the Tales of um, Permanent Vacation, which had been released two years before. And, and I didn't know, actually, until yesterday. This was released on the 12th of September, 1989. So within just over a week, you had these two puppies that have been released, which is amazing to think that now. Uh, we've got what a time to be alive. Um, excellent album uh, produced by Bruce Fairbin, uh, who is of ACDC fame as well. Um, later on, so um, we'll be talking about him, I'm sure, at another time. Standout tracks for me, uh, Young Lust, uh, F-I-N-E, Fine, uh, Loving an Elevator, of course, everybody knows that song, everybody, it was a smash on MTV. Um, Jamie's Got a Gun, which another another big smash. Uh, the Other Side, I mean, it's a great album, comes in at 47 minutes, 7 million, 7 million sold in the US, and actually got to number three in the UK. Aerosmith getting to number three in the UK. Amazing, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, good album. I like the cover. That's why it's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. So, any other thoughts on uh, Aerosmith Pump? Well, it's got my favourite Aerosmith song, which is F-I-N-E Fine. Absolutely brilliant song. Janie's Got a Gun. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, pref I preferred this record to uh, Permanent Vacation. Same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, I think I've mentioned before as well, the there was a making of this album video, wasn't there? And it's so good. It's, it's how they layer the vocals and how they kind of coax the uh, performances out of each other. It's, it's a brilliant video if you can find it on YouTube. It's great. Yeah. Um, for me, Permanent Vacation for me was better, which is weird because that Permanent Vacation I had record in my room, played to the pump, um, had it on the, in the, literally on tape in the car. And it didn't have the same impression, didn't have the same longevity. For me. It had those decent tracks that you've just mentioned, but overall a second place to Permanent Vacation. Um, yeah, but it was good, but not as good as that. And it was the first tour in the UK for over 10 years, uh, pushing this album, which was amazing. And I was lucky enough to see Hampstead Odeon, Wembley Arena, and Birmingham NEC. Tom, if you're watching, can you remember that night? Oh my gosh, what a night that one was. Brilliant. So that's Aerosmith Pump. Um, let's go to the next one. And these guys were the Young Pretenders. This was released on January. I think it was January the 24th. So tell us if that's right or not in the comments uh, below. But this is the mighty Skid Row. Um, um, oh my, did they really take uh, the metal scene by storm in 1989. These were one of those bands, a little bit like Guns N' Roses, that uh, were liked by pretty much everyone. They had so much attitude, so much power. Um, and this album really stands out. It sounds brilliant today. Some great standout tracks, of course, Big Guns, which they still play live. Uh, 18 and Life, which they still play live. It's a great power ballad in the inverted commas. Youth Gone Wild, of course, which was a signature song of the year, in my mind. Um, I Remember You, Piece of Me. Comes in at just under, under 49 minutes. Five times platinum in the States. That's not bad for a debut album, right? Um, they, it was produced by Michael Wagner, and um, the manager was Doc McGee of Kiss fame. So, again, he was a busy man at the time as well. So there were some similar names coming across many of these yeah. bands at the time, but we've already mentioned Bob Rock as well. So um, any other comments on this debut from these boys? I just like the attitude. Yeah, kick my ass. They all looked so good, and uh, they spoke to me from the way they looked. And uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Another reason why we went to see the uh, Motley Crue show it was these mm. boys opening up. It was John Bon Jovi who uh, it helped them out, wasn't it? And then they famously yeah. fell out, sued each other. But, uh, that's why I think Doc McGee was Bon Jovi as well. 
yeah. as well as Kiss. So yeah, they had a they had a good start. You know, I mean, whether they like him now or not, it certainly got them off to a good start. Got a record contract and everything. But. It was on Atlantic. They were on Atlantic, so um, that was quite interesting. Different from from Vertigo. I don't know if there was a link between Vertigo and Atlantic. You, you'd probably be able to I say that. So. But, no. um, but I saw Doc McGee last year at Kiss, and he was looking very healthy. So um, he's probably not done so bad over the years. Well done, Doc. That wasn't having a go, by the way. So uh, on service. Yeah, but this record, <laughs> this record was almost. This is almost the whole point of being nineteen was mm -hmm. to have this record and to tell the word world to go yeah yeah exactly exactly that jam yeah well done yeah, well, that's to go without getting, just to tell them where to F, where to go where to effing go it's just like yeah you're better off dead than making a mess of me just just you know get out of my face yeah it did fit the age quite well all right yeah, it, was, it, yeah. was everything. it was everything that we needed to hear we heard it and we lived it and it was like yeah this is what it's all about and that and record, it, and it's to do this record as a debut and it'd be so good and then to follow it up with something more metal in Slave mm. to the Grind in my opinion is just superb because that they set themselves up for the next record to be not as good nowhere near as good and in my but opinion they look great as well and that song You've Gone Wild whenever that was played at the Rock Night yeah. at uh, Edwards Number no. 8 or Rock City everyone went absolutely nuts I mean it's just That's great what we were wasn't it we were used and we were going wild yeah at the beginning yeah. it just emanates <clears throat> I could compare it to the to the opening titles of the Teletubbies when it's like a siren that's saying, "Come and watch Teletubbies." It's, it's like, "Come on, Skid Row, we're in town." It's just, <laughs> and it's just brilliant. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah, no. Yeah. Skid you'll Row. Never hear, like, never hear that analogy again. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> let's get on to uh, let's get on to Gav's uh, curated three. Oh yeah, there we go. Britain's finest, Tamworth's finest, apart from Magnum, Wolfsbane. <laughs> with their uh, debut album, Live Fast, Die Fast. I'm not sure if that was going to be the cover, which is on the back of the cover. But uh, yeah, brilliant. I mean, an unusual story as well, because this was uh, this was another Rick Rubin um, sign-in. Um, we we crossed their paths quite a bit because we were in the marquee around that time. And Wolf Spain always played the marquee. So I think we're aware of them from that. Tiger Tales, Gav. That I, yeah. I probably saw them supporting Tiger Tales seven or eight times, I think. Yeah, and they were always talking to the crowd and they had no airs and graces. Blaze was as effervescent as he always is, and he still is to this day. Um, production, unfortunately, unlike every other, almost every other Rick Rubin production, this is pretty dry and crap. It is, yeah. You're um, totally right there. Kind of spoils the it. Songs um, make up for it, though. But the songs were as heavy as hell, um, full of uh so un-british in how confident and powerful they are and, and boisterous and it, you know they were just everything we wanted you know and his attitude I, I remember seeing an interview with him which i loved with blaze where uh, people were saying that he sounded like david lee roth and apparently he went up to david lee roth and said apparently people think that you sound like me it's <laughs> 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 so brilliant that kind of attitude you've just got to love but yeah, there were some singles off the album, which I've got a couple here. I've got Like It Hot, which was uh, red vinyl. There. It was a gatefold and lots of stuff to look at. But I mean, that that image is bloody brilliant. Look at them. Mm. On Def Jam records as well, isn't it? Def Jam, exactly, yeah. yeah. And then the second single, I think, was Shaking, that one. And again, like all our favourite bands, they had B-sides that you can't get anywhere else. So on this one was Brando and Angel. And on the other one, there was Limo and Loco, as well as Manhunt. Um, yeah, really loved them. Um, went to see them up in Bradford as well as the marquee. So my brother was at university up there and they happened to be on. So went there, nicked the poster, still got it. <laughs> yeah, they were. I really loved them. And they carried on. And the next two or three albums were great as well, uh, in my opinion. What about you guys? Well, you just got to love the way they look, haven't you? <laughs> it's just brilliant. <laughs> First time I'd ever heard uh, a British guitar player shredding as well. And uh, oh, yeah, he's amazing. Jace, isn't he? Jace is just all over the place on this album. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely intense. His guitar work on this is great. It's it's cool, yeah. And signed as well. Oh, that's really good. Love that. And then uh, oh, wait, sorry, I should should have just did. as always. I put the clippings inside the album, so these all fell out. So this was. This was the advert for the album in Kerrang! And this was the review of the album. 
And it losers, is. not losers. Five Ks. Wow. And then portent of things to come. They toured with Maiden. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. He did have a look at Bruce Dickinson about him, though, didn't he? At the time, we used yeah, to say bit, that. Yeah. When we used to go to the marquee in the Royal Standard, we used to say, Kai, Blaze looks just like Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I love Wolf. We, we caught Merley Doors, Wolf, because I really did. I really liked them. And they were always playing as well, which helped. So you could get to see them loads. Mm. Um, but we. For, Kathy Wilson, the, the, the EP, and Downfall the Good Guys were two of my favourite records. Absolutely loved them so much. And I don't know if it's the production that turned me off of this as much. Um, but even the Genius record, which, depending on when you're watching this, that is out fairly recently in the 2020s, um, caught them live on that. And Blazers, they're, they're, all, they're all so good. They're such a great band. They're such a great bunch. They're yeah. gentlemen. They're proper rock gentlemen. They're really great folk. To, you have a chat, and Blaze is so... Yeah. Such a gentleman. I think that's the only place he's such a gent. And he's had loads of sh shit thrown at him before and mm -hmm. made and this and made that. But he just gets out there and he, he does it night after night. I've seen yep. him seen him with Wolfies play in front of less than 200, maybe 100 people. And he's just sweated blood for the better. He's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I've loved every second of it. Um, and he's always and then, remained dignified about the maiden thing, yeah. hasn't he? He's always been. Yes. A, you know, yeah. yeah. Which we like. He's a real... Yeah. All of the whole band are fantastic, and Blaze is, is, as I say, is a real gent in my opinion. Okay, cool. Maybe, maybe yeah. a band that should have been a bit bigger. And just a reminder for any uh, any kids that are watching Def Jam, it was the same label at the time as Slayer, as uh, the Beastie Boys, who were pretty massive, and then mm. the Black Crows, who released their first album in 1990. So they were a pretty important label at the time, and uh, so they were good state. They had some good stable mates. Just such a shame they never really got to the heights that uh, they would have wished to. So, mm. yeah. Okay. So next one, Gav. Next one, another British band, FM. So this was their second album after Indiscreet, which is a, a classic that everybody acknowledges as a classic. This time took a bit longer to get out. Uh, they uh, switched from Portrait Records to Epic part of the same CBS family, because I was working at CBS at the time, um, off to America to record with a, a big name producer and um, actually mixed by Nigel Green, who did uh, a lot of Def Leppard. Um, and this was Neil Kieran, who has done all the big AOR um, bands. So couple, they, the, to be fair to the record company, they pushed the hell out of this record. There was loads of singles. Um, Bad Luck, Someday, Every Time I Think of You, were all singles, all in multiple formats and um, all really good stuff. Um, I've, got, I've got all the 12 inches, but there's just one here, which is Someday. All of them having the hilarious extended mixes as well, which we've talked about before from the 80s. Um, <clears throat> and B-sides that you can't get anywhere else. In this occasion, it was Obsession and Alibi, which are both great tracks. Um, yeah, this was a limited edition with a sticker inside. It's got a seal on the on the edge there for some reason. But yeah, I, I really loved them. And we saw this band so many times on tour, supporting everybody from Gary Moore to Magnum. Saw them headlining as well, at big shows in London. Yeah, love them. Loved them then, love them now. What about you guys? I love them more now. That indiscreet, I think I'd over, I'd overdone it a bit. I'm not going to lie. I loved the AOR back in the day. The American Heartbeat album, as we said, in the early 80s. And I loved it. The Foreigner, Boston. They were my thing. By the end of the 80s, I was going a bit more for the, I was a bit more for your annihilator, your cult. This was a little bit too polished, I think is the phrase we were saying. It's at the time, polished. it was a little bit too polished. Um, didn't last long because I, I love FM. Uh, and I've seen them umpteen times, especially over the last like, few years. I've seen them, and they, they just, for me, they just got better. Um, the stuff they're churning out now in the in the twenty twenties is so good, and they're so strong. And um, and Mr. Overland's voice is so magnificent live. Yeah. They're a proper great rock band. If you haven't seen them lately, they're always touring. Pop out and see them; you will not regret it. They're really, really good. But this is a good album. I, I looked out in revision for this pod. I revisited it, and you know, it's, it's, there's uh, the tracks you mentioned. There's some good tracks. But just at the time for me, it got. It, I was. It was a little bit too polished. Yeah, don't stop's a great track as well. I didn't pull that one out. I've got that album as well. Yeah, they're good. Good, great live. And you, you saw, we saw them supporting lots of people. Some saw them headlining in some really small venues as well. Um, the Reading Majestic being one. 
and that yep, was that. true enough. Amazing. Yeah, me and me and Dill were lucky to catch, lucky enough to catch them. I think it was 2018 uh, supporting Saxon. They were late replacements for Y and T, and they actually blew the place apart. It was brilliant at the yeah. roundhouse. They were yeah. really, really good that night. They were really they good. Were. Okay, uh, Pete jumped on drums here. He did have a look of uh, Jeremy Clarkson about him that night, though, didn't he? From the, from the, <laughs> from the, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, good stuff. Right, next one. He's gone from a massive drum kit to a tiny drum kit. <laughs> oh, Pete. Must be because he's lugging his own gear now. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, that's more likely. That tends to happen <laughs> speaking as a drummer. <clears throat> okay, okay. Cool. Final, final throw from me. Now, this one I just remember. So this is Faith No More. This was their first album with their new singer, Mike Patton. And God, did he take them to new places? Um, talented fellow. This one was kind of the students' favourite, wasn't it? it? They were they were very big with students and they played a lot of the student towns, as I recall. Um, some epic tracks, including Epic. Hey. Hey. Um, from Out of Nowhere. Some really weird stuff on here. Um, including a cover, War Pigs, which actually is a really good cover with some slap bass in it. Um, I managed to get, for, from out of nowhere, signed. So that's just the cover. That's the picture disc there as well. Because um, they used what to do a, a lot of... What a great picture that is, though. <laughs> the a fantastic picture of them. It's brilliant. Check it out. <laughs> yeah. So they used to do a lot of HMB signings and things. You know, they were really, they really supported the UK a lot. Um, because we loved them, I think. And um, yeah, so I, I got that signed at an HMV. And someone sent it to me, which was brilliant. Um, yeah, they were great live as well. And I think the, the thing that make this, makes this quite unique is the keyboards over a really heavy band. They had really kind of quirky and uh, melodic keyboard playing. And pro proper piano as well, which was really, really yeah. good. Yeah. And, you know, there'd be beginnings and ends of songs that would fade in and fade out. And it was a really unique sound in a metal band with a bit of kind of funk and slap bass in there as well. It was a really unique sound and, and we loved it. It was so, it was so different. It blew me away. I remember it blew me. At first I didn't know why I liked it so I just didn't know what it was. Cause it's like, that's, I, I, but it was just, everything about it was brilliant. And you'd say, oh, you've got to listen to this, don't you mate? You've got to so what, what's it like? But yeah. It's, Hard it's to describe. Not, just listen to it. It's brilliant. And I, again, I had this, I know, constantly in my car I had nights out and we could go to Oxford to nights out and you'd, be, you'd have this on and it's just such a vibe with that bass and when you're in your car and you've got that bass giving it large and it's just so and again it had proper attitude real yeah. real stick it to the man attitude and it was brilliant I love this record there's lots of different stuff on here it's my first introduction to what would be called rap metal I suppose there's, mm. there's some there's some rapping on it the the, the slap bass and it's uh, this oh, this album's great even the, the slow uh, title track the real thing brilliant eight minutes of total brilliance but my favorite song in this album is zombie eaters which uh, is just absolutely immense uh, apparently Mike Patton came into uh, faith no more after all the music had been written and he wrote the lyrics to the whole album in about 10 days oh really and, uh, yeah and uh, they said they took it you know he just took it to a, to a totally different place to what they'd been such, used to yeah, and, such yeah there's every song on this album is but i've been listening to it I, over this weekend pretty much consistently i just couldn't i couldn't remember how good it was it's just a fantastic record when you think that previous record they had a big hit with with we care a lot didn't they? Yeah, a massive yeah. hit yeah really yeah big. but to then go that direct fair play it totally paid off obviously because deal was your numbers man but this must have sold a shitload do you know what i've not looked how many sold but it That's definitely nice. was, they were they were a big student band at the time so yeah. I, you know, they were great and thinking back to the rock clubs at the time i was i was away living in birmingham we care a lot was one of those tunes that was always played towards the end of the night because it was massive but then you know with this album epic being a brilliant one from out of nowhere um, for me, the, the best song on the album is Underwater Love. It's a brilliant tune. It's absolutely superb. Sur Surprise You're Dead as well is fantastic. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Yeah. Metal, that. yeah. I was lucky enough to see him three times in 1990, twice at the Hummingbird and then later at Reading. Uh, Jane's Addiction was supposed to play and pulled out for some reason. But it was this whole grunge thing was starting to play. Um, oh, it was starting to play out. Mud Honey were playing that night. I think Nirvana had been played the year before as well. Um, or playing the year after, I can't remember off, off the top of my head. 
but they were amazing live. And there's one particular moment when they played War Pigs in Birmingham. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, being on the, being on the, anyone that knew or went to the Hummingbird in Birmingham, it was just, it was what run by Rasters. It was just a feral club. It was insane. It was mental. There were people stage dive, stage diving, jumping off the PA. It was just, it was brilliant. <laughs> Great memories. They were just, they seemed like they were going to be the biggest band in the world. They did, but, yeah. yeah. And then they just sort of petered yeah. out, funnily enough, but maybe again, and again, they, was, they were playing stuff that, would have would have enabled them to stay up to speed with Pearl Jam, with Nirvana, and all the bands that were coming yeah. out after that. You know, they weren't hair metal or anything like that. But yeah, it just didn't work out for them for some reason. But this album's a, a classic, and again, I'd encourage mm, anyone classic download it, go and buy it. It's brilliant. It was actually on Slash Records in the UK, um, and I really don't know if Slash has got anything to do. I probably not. London Records. No, I don't think so. Yeah, but um, yeah. Definitely worth it. It's a brilliant album. Super. Yeah, I haven't got the vinyl. I've only got the CD. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't get it on vinyl for anything less than about 50 quid at the minute. I've been looking for it this weekend. Right. Okay. I, bought a, I bought a yellow print. Yeah, I, I bought a yellow print a couple of years ago. Needed right. it. I needed to get a put. Yeah, yeah. It. I'm going to have to get one, I think. Okay, excellent. That's Faith yeah. Them All. That's, uh, that's Gav. Let's move on to the best of the rest. There's a couple, just a couple I think we'll shout out from this. Um, for me, Slip of the Tongue, White Snake, a couple of decent tracks on there, but didn't they've not been able to recapture the form of 87 or anything before no. that, in my, in my opinion. Uh, Gav, anything you want to pick out? Yeah, I'll pick out Queen, because it's a good album. It's a really, really strong album, but just not Queen of the of the glory days, but definitely a solid uh, solid work. Nothing wrong with it. Queen's best ever song on it. It's a bit controversial. Breakthrough. The, the invisible, no, the invisible man. man. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Big Albums. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. You've got to, you got to listen to that at least once in your life, that album. Yeah, it's good. They're on tour this year as well. Aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. Any comments? Uh, that was the third decent Alice Cooper album because I was actually quite into them and that, that was good and I liked it a lot. But I, that, that Queen album's got three or four really, really, really good songs on it. Mm. But it's not a full album. But it wasn't far off the 12. Okay, cool. I mean, there's a couple more best of the rest. A uh, couple to pick out. Uh, we like a bit of Badlands so much that we keep talking about them. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, there's the Badlands album. That's got a difficult one to get hold of now on vinyl. And of course, Blue Murder, Johnny Sykes. Yeah. Andy Franklin, and you Peachy as well, I think. It's good. Very much the 1987 sound on that, isn't there? Yeah. So it yeah. kind of sounds identical it's for cool. obvious reasons. And, uh, okay, that's the best of the rest. So uh, let's just have a quick reminder of the 12 curated albums that we picked out today. Um, a real mix from debut album from Skid Row, second albums from FM, debut from Gun, um, the, the Old Timers Kiss still pumping out the music, Faith No More uh, putting their mark on metal, Aerosmith with a, with a banger. And, uh, you know, without going through all of them, it's a great track some great albums there so let's uh with that in mind we've uh that's the 12 we picked we're going to go to our top five now and we're going to go to our resident um dj mr jammo uh great mix this year and i'll bring you the top five they're not the main attraction this time but kicking us off it's white line with big game at number five should have been high this next album includes the ultimate love song lyrics, in my opinion. Wound up, can't sleep, can't do anything right, honey. Not since I set my eyes on you, tell you the truth. <laughs> anyway, we've all been there. And at number four, it's the superb Sonic Temple from the cult. Man, hunt, man, hunt. Man, man, hunt, hunt, man, hunt, man, hunt, man, hunt, man, hunt. It's the amazing Wolfsbane with Live Fast, Die Fast, a very credible number three, from the official Killer Albums of 1989 from Tales from the Power Age. You want it all, but you can't have it. Well, we all had it and we still do, and it's flipping awesome. It's Faith No More with The Real Thing at number two. Which can only mean they were the youth gone wild with big guns making a mess and we totally remember them. It can only be Skid Row with their self-titled debut album, Rightfully, at number one. Over to you, Dill. Yeah. 
Cool. Right. Cheers, Jamo. That's our that's our well, that's our top twelve and also our top five. Um, if you agree, um, let us know. If you don't agree, let us know. Or if you think it's completely other top five, as long as it's not black box, put your comments and let us know what you think. We really appreciate that. Also, give us a like, give us a sub, get involved. We really like the interaction from all of you. So really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Um, if you want to catch up with our escapades around the country and around the uh, music venues of, uh, I was going to say England, but it will soon be Europe. Um, but watch out for that. Um, give this channel uh, a check out. This is our live channel. We've got loads of stuff on there. Most rec recently, Enter Shakiri uh, have gone on from um, some local uh, videos that Jam took. Uh, we've also got uh, Florence Back Black and we've got Dirty Honey from um, the Electric Ballroom in Camden as well. So check them out. Some great videos on there. And this okay. is a separate subscribe. So subscribe to our channel, but subscribe to this channel as well. They're different awesome. sub subs. Thanks, Kev. Okay. So... Um, if you want to get in contact with us, you can uh, catch us on Facebook on Tales from the Power Age. You can find us on Twitter on Tales from the Power Age at TTFTPR, online at www.talesfromthepowerage.com. You can get some merch uh, from Redbubble. Um, we have got some serious tours lined up and some serious dates lined up over the course of the next few months. Looking forward to meeting and seeing a bunch of you who have been in contact with us. So that's going to be great fun, whether that's in Dublin, whether it's in London, whether it's any, it's everywhere, right? I'm not even going to go on, I'm not even going to talk about it, it's too exciting. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. Speak to you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers.